so the purpose really is to document your history so that your 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 story is preserved, right? Because a lot of people, Johnny, uh, they know your they know your music, but they really don't know the integral part about how you produce what you, the songs you produce. Specifically for the Universal Hip Hop Museum, your song Shaft in Africa uh, was a cult record in the streets. And I don't know if you realize that, but the kids in the South Bronx that started hip hop, you know, uh, Shaft in Africa was like one of the most famous, uh, uh, what we call break beats that the kids that used to do the spinning on the floor and the break dancing used to dance to. So there, there were a couple records back in the early 70s that were really instrumental in the birth of hip hop. So James Brown, Give It Up and Turn It A Loose, uh, the incredible bongo rock band by uh, 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 their song Apache, uh, uh, Dennis Corfi, Scorpio, uh, Babe Ruth, the Mexican, Jimmy Castor, it's just begun, and Shaft in Africa, uh, from the movie Shaft in Africa, th those were like cult records that all the kids in the parks used to dance to. So your, your song uh, was one of those records that everybody, you know, who was involved in hip-hop, uh, needed needed to have and to this day a lot of people still play your song you know when, when they have uh hip-hop parties or outdoor park park jams your song is still played to this day and, and the reason why it became you know w one of those uh important songs for hip-hop is the orchestration and the percuss the percussions that you use you know the Especially the very beginning, you know, with the with the uh, congas and the or the bongos, and then uh, you know just how it goes from the percussions into a high energy ry rhythmic, tr you know, uh, bass and guitar track with the horns, and you know the, the whole instrumentation was very unique. So that that's why that's why a lot of kids that became DJs love that love that song. Yeah, well, the thing is, I, I uh, you know, I was, I'm was, i still floored as to why they picked that, you know, and I, uh, the only person that I've ever been able to get to to even just say thank you was Jay-Z. And it uh, just happened that a couple of years ago, uh, he was on tour with uh, Kanye, Kanye West, and uh, I happened to see where they were coming through this area, and at that point, I made a call to uh, the venue to see if they could put me in touch with the uh, promoter of that tour. And uh, they did. They put me in touch with him. And through a bit of luck, I was able to get to Jay-Z. And uh, Jay-Z invited my wife and I down to the concert. And uh, we weren't, you know, uh, I'm 95 now, and, uh, not being interested in really seeing a hip-hop, you know, concert or anything. Uh, all I wanted to do was, <laughs> yeah, all, all I wanted to do was just meet Jay-Z, shake his hand, and ask him why and how did you guys come across that hook? Uh, yeah, so, 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 so what did he tell you? I'm, I'm interested to hear what he told you. Well, uh, he didn't really go into a lot of detail, but I met his um, his chief engineer, who was on tour with him, handling his sound, and right. he called Just Blaze. Just Blaze is the one who the, the, the producer, right? He's the that producer. producer. He's the uh -huh. producer that took the music to Jay Z. But uh, this guy called, um, yeah, and darn it, I'm, I, his name is escaping me right now, but. He called Jay-Z on the phone right then and there. Uh, or I mean, he called Just Blaze. And uh, Blaze said to me, he said, he said, I don't know whether you were aware or not, but he said, your music 
back then. And we're now, now we're talking 30 years ago. Come on, this is ridiculous. Yeah, that, 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 that song came out in 1973. 1973, correct. And, you know, and I, I was just floored by that. Uh, and then come to find out, Diddy or Puff Daddy or whatever he, uh, he's going by nowadays, Diddy. He, had, he had sampled it months, a few months before Jay-Z did it. Right. And uh, then later through BMI, I found out that another track from the same movie uh, was sampled. Truck Stop. Truck Stop. Uh, that was sampled. Uh, not Truck Stop so much. Uh uh, Jardia's, uh, El Jardia. Okay. El Jardia had been sampled by Rick Ross, and also, um, oh darn it, I always forget this guy's name, but he was with the Wu-Tang Gang. Uh, Ghostface Killer. Yep, Ghostface Killer. Ghostface, mm -hmm. Ghostface Killer and Rick Ross did what Jay-Z and Diddy did. They sampled right. the same hook. Right. The, the same identical hook. And, uh, of course, uh, I'm still baffled because I've never had a chance to get to any of them to just say thank you. So all I wanted to do was just say thank you. I don't want to, uh, I'm at the place when you're 95, you're at the place where you don't want to hang out or anything like that. Hey, right. you're just glad to wake up every morning. Yep, so, 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 the, the purpose of, to answer your first question, the purpose of the uh, interview that we were hoping to do live today uh, was to give people who uh, adore your song, especially the dancers, a chance to say thank you uh, for creating something that inspires them to do what they do on the dance floor. And... and so it's one thing to have the producers sample your music, but it's another thing to have the DJs play it and then people respond to it. And that's where the B-Boys came into. The B-Boys and the B-Girls that re do the acrobatic hip-hop dancing, they're the ones that really gravitate. They're the ones that made the song special. Because are any, of, any of these, the B-Boys, the B-Girls, uh, are they... On the internet or anything where I could actually see some of this happening? Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, I'm not sure if you're going to see them dancing to your song, but you can see what they do. Um, you know, um, they're all over the place. Uh, Jennifer can just do, you know, uh, uh, a search on break dancing, and and you could pull that up for Johnny and, and show him what break dancing is. Uh, and you could um, maybe even do a search on uh, Shaft in Africa to see if there's any any videos that were used um, that any videos that that actually show people dancing uh, to, to Johnny's song. You know, so, but, you know, we represent, you know, I, I'm the executive director of the Universal Hip Hop Museum. It's a museum that's being built here in New York. And at the Universal Hip Hop Museum, our mission is to make sure that we document and we preserve and celebrate the history of hip hop, which includes five elements. So it's the DJs. It's the MCs or the rappers, you, you know them as rappers. Jay-Z would be an MC, a rapper. It's the graffiti artists. It's the B-boys and B-girls. And it's uh, what we call the knowledge, the science of hip-hop. So our job as a museum is to make sure that we document the stories of the people who created this culture. And your song is part of the culture. Uh, and it and it has been since the very beginning. Yeah, I was just curious because um, 
Let me tell you, you know, at this stage of the game for me, you know, uh, uh, it's, uh, you know, I'm aware I'm not really on top of any of this anymore. You know, I'm, I've been retired over 40 years. It's strictly out of the business, you know, and, uh, and these things all of a sudden are popping up and, uh, believe me, I'm very happy about it, but I'm, I'm also curious as to, why anybody wants to continue to hang on to something 30 years old. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, what, you, what you've explained to me, sort of, uh, I, I can understand that, and, uh, and I'm very flattered by it all, but uh, uh, because, like I say, now I'm away from the business, I'm out of the business, uh, I just enjoy what yeah, so so for, for 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 the kids in hip hop and the and the people in hip hop, even the iconic DJs like uh, Grandmaster Flash and even the producers like Just Blaze, I'm sure they would like to know what was your thinking when you were composing the song Shaft in Africa. Well, the thinking is this: I can answer that very easily. Uh, I was called upon, I was commissioned to do the soundtrack for a movie. And the movie was Shaft in Africa. And every scene, every bit of music there was written for a particular scene. Uh, the scene that uh, Jay-Z and Diddy uh, sampled was a scene of where Shaft was about to board a plane and he was taking a plane to go to uh, uh, Africa. And uh, that's where that cue came from. Now, as far as the musicians are concerned, uh, I'm trying to think if I could remember the, any names of, the, of musicians that were on that date. A few, a few uh, ring a bell, but uh, for the most part, when you're dealing with a major studio like MGM Universal uh, or any of these people, they have contractors. And all I have to do is say, okay, these are the instruments that I need. If, right. if there happens to be a particular individual that I might want on the day, I might give them a name. I says, okay, try to get so-and-so. Try to get and, But for the most part, uh, I don't really uh, pick the musicians. Contractor, whoever the contractor for that date is, he knows what, uh, you know, what I would need. And like I say, if there are particular uh, people that I use, uh, just like on that date, I'm pretty sure Paul Jackson Jr. might have been on the date on guitar. Uh, on bass, I'm not even, uh, I can't even say that I remember the bass player, but uh, that's the way these things work. So musician-wise, I can't really tell you who all the guys were. No, that, that, that's fine, but I guess my, my question, Johnny, is, um, so the, the Shaft in Africa had a very intricate composition. Uh, it, it was... Uh, uh, very rhythmic. It used horns. It used flutes. It used a lot of percussion. Why did you why go in that? Like why, why did you go in that direction for that song? Uh, well, actually, uh, I went in that direction because that's what I heard from that particular scene. That particular scene. This is what I was visualizing. Music wise, and uh, I can't uh, say maybe exactly. I, you know, I just figured that the instrumentation that was used was for a particular scene. You know, and uh, and it changed for different scenes. But uh, the main thing is, the title of the movie was Shaft in Africa, and uh, from the opening track. To the very end, I tried to keep the shaft being in Africa. Yep. 
I got it. Um, when was it? Wh when did you first realize that your song was being popularized by the people in hip hop? I didn't realize it until I was watching the American Music Awards one night uh, in the fall of 2006. And uh, I, uh, in watching American Music Awards, I happened to hear a familiar theme, and here's Jay Z with a whole production going on. And uh, I heard some very familiar music. And uh, then, uh, I think during that same fall, a couple of weeks later, I was watching a football game on a Sunday, and here's a Budweiser commercial that comes on, and here's Danica Patrick sitting in a race car. I think Al Unser Jr., I think, was the other one, and Jay-Z sitting in a race car. Of course, you know, Jay-Z called the tune that he was using uh, my hook in. He was calling it, Show Me What You Got. And right. then, the, uh, then that was the... Uh, other time that I saw it, and I have a son. I have a son who is uh, close to the hip hop age, and uh, he knows a lot about it. And I called him. I said, "Hey, I said his name's Brett." I said, "Brett, I said, do you know does J C have a new CD out?" He said, "Well, let me check." He said, "I think so." And he called me back. And when he called me back, he called me. He said, "Dad," he said, "they got your name on the CD." Under <laughs> and then right. I think uh, Billboard magazine came out with an article, and uh, the article was quoting was saying Johnny Pate gets paid twice, and <laughs> it, uh, uh, it uh, made the comment about uh, how Jay Z and Diddy. Uh, you know, he said, great minds running the same channel, you know, stuff like that, how they uh, right. sample the music. And that's, at at that point, I, I was still very surprised. And, of course, uh, I'm a member of BMI. And, uh, of course, when BMI royalty time came by, all of a sudden I look up and I see something that's entitled uh, Yacht Club. I said, Yacht Club, and it's got my name on it. And uh, I noticed something else. Um, oh, darn it, what's... Oh, I've forgotten what the other... But uh, Wu-Tang, uh, uh, no, Ghostface Killer. Ghostface uh -huh. Killer and Rick Ross had sampled another cue from Shafted Africa. It was a cue in, uh, from Shafted Africa that I called El Jardia. And this was a scene where here's Shaft on a camel going through the desert on his way to this uh, African city, El Jardia. And uh, they both sample the same hook from that particular scene. And uh, at that point, I was really baffled, and I, I uh, just wrote a form letter to most of the trade papers and whatever radio stations I get to, I could get to, mentioning this. And all I said in the form letter was, I said, I would just openly like to thank these people. And I named them, you know, for using my work, you know. But uh, that's, right. when I, that's when I um, found out that this was going on. And, that, uh, and I'll be very honest with you. When all of this was happening, uh, I really wasn't paying any attention to the music scene at all. I was enjoying the fact that my wife and I had a lovely granddaughter who was born during this period, and this is what we were enjoying, and I wasn't really paying that much attention to the music scene, as I am now. You know, I, I have been away from the music scene for over 20 years, and I don't really, you know, follow it as I probably, as some people probably would be, should be. But uh, it was nice while it lasted, but uh, it's, believe me, it's behind me now. 
No, I, I understand that. And that's why it's so important to make sure that uh, your story is told because you have a very uh, interesting story that, you know, as a museum, it's our responsibility to make sure that uh, our stories are documented and, and celebrated so that future generations who want to have access to this information uh, can get to it and learn from it. Uh, so, uh, Jennifer, um, are you still there? Yeah, I'm right here. Yes, yeah, so I would, your song Shaft in Africa, like I said, is one of the iconic hip-hop songs of all time. And uh, it is uh, it is just a pleasure to talk to the person uh, that was the music uh, producer and composer for Shaft in Africa. Thank you so much for your time, Johnny. Uh, I, I learned so much just in the, in the short time speaking to you on the phone. Well, my, my pleasure, and I hope along the way, I hope it can help someone, you know, because, uh, like I say, I was extremely lucky and so fortunate in so many ways. A lot of people helped me along the way, and the least I can do is try to pass it on to others coming up. Very nice. Thank you so much. No Pleasure to talk to you. Okay. Take care. Take care.